I, I call him my new big brother. <laughs> See, the first explosion, they put all that pressure on me because I was the last speaker. All right. They was like, he a tornado. He, <laughs> he can make wonders. <laughs> so I had to ignore everything they said and say, all right, God, it's all you. So I'm going to put the same pressure on my big brother. But honestly, he has a word from the Lord. So if you would, for the last time tonight, would you rest on your feet? And put your hands together for our anchor speaker for the night from the Lighthouse Church, our congregational pastor, Minister Torrance Moore. Well, well, well. You know, I don't pay no, I don't pay no mind to feel. Listen, have you, had, have you had a wonderful time tonight? Amen. Listen, we've had some powerful speakers. And listen, let me tell you something. Minister Ooh, Freeman, oh, Lord. That was the Holy Ghost. Amen. That was the Holy Ghost. And listen, she didn't preach my whole sermon, so I'm just going to do the whole thing all over again. <laughs> but giving honor to God and uh, the said man of this house, Pastor Tim. Yes. Yes. Listen, we thank you for allowing us to come here. Uh, and just partake in the whole experience. Yes. Uh, and to all my brothers out there, I see them on the front row. Uh, even my good friend, uh, Pastor Jimmy, right there. Bless, Bless you, man. Doc. Amen. And all my brother, brother Phil and <laughs> all my good brothers back here. And even to my future, let, tell, hey, baby, hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. <laughs> okay. Woo, Lord. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, the... yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, we're not going to prolong the time any longer. We're not going to prolong the time any longer because when I get to talking about her, I start acting up. <laughs> so, if you would, turn with me to... The Lord done changed this thing up for me a little bit, but turn this thing, turn uh, with me to uh, 2 Samuel, the 16th chapter. 2 Samuel, the 16th chapter. Starting about the fifth verse. Listen, I'll be reading from the Holman translation, so mine sounds a tad, a tad bit different. A tad bit different. Starting at the fifth verse, 16, the fifth verse. I'll be reading a few scriptures. When King David got to Bahurim, a man belonging to the family of the house of Saul was just coming out. His name was Shammai, son of Gerah, and he was yelling curses as he approached. He threw stones at David and at all the royal servants, the people and the warriors on David's right and left. Shammai said, Shammai said, as he cursed, get out, get out, you worthless murderer. The Lord has paid you back for all the blood of the house of Saul in whose place you rule. And the Lord has handed the kingdom over to your son Absalom. Look, you are in trouble because you're a murderer. I'm going to stop it right there. If you would, just look at your neighbor and say, it was all my fault. It was all my fault. To understand, and before I get started, I just want you to have a quick 15-minute Bible study with me. Because to understand the totality of this story, you have to go all the way back to the end of chapter 12. The sin with David and Bathsheba. And even though we like to note all the accomplishments that David had, we never like to note the, accomplishment, I mean, the downward spiral that the sin of Bathsheba had on his kingdom. Uh, they, they, David and Bathsheba had their sin, and they had a child. The Bible says they had a child, and when the child was born, for a week the, Bible, the baby was sick. David was fasting and praying. The Bible says that the baby died. David got up, dusted himself off, sat at the table, and ate. The Bible goes on to say that later on he had another child by the name of Solomon from the same woman. The Bible says that God loved that child. 
after the, uh, the, after, after Solomon, the Bible says that uh, Absalom and Amnon, two brothers, Amnon had a crush, a lustful desire for his sister Tamar. Amnon goes in to Tamar. I'm telling you the story, and we'll be going right into this thing. It won't take that long. Amnon goes in to Tamar's room, forces himself on her, rapes her. After he gets done with her, he pushes her off to the side. It discords the woman as used, because any time you give yourself to a man that way, after he's done with you, he, would, he really doesn't want to deal with you anymore. The Bible says he pushes us off to the side. Absalom goes in, finds Tamar in a disgraced state. He, go, he looks at her and says, did Amnon do this to you? He says, she said, yes. For two years, it remains silent in the house. Absalom becomes upset because David doesn't respond. Two years, he remains silent. He goes into a conspiracy, plots himself to kill Amnon, and says, when I get them together, he tells his servants, when I get them all together at the table, when he's finding himself full and merry, strike him down and kill him. They go to the table. All the brothers come. They sit down. They have a merry little dinner. They get themselves drunk. Amnon finds himself in a merry way. Absalom says, go ahead and kill him. They strike him down. All the brothers scatter and flee. The story gets back to David and says, all your sons have been killed. But the right report came and said, no, just one has been killed, Amnon. All the other sons appear on their horses, crying and weeping. And Absalom escapes to a place called Geshur. Now I want to stop right there. Because it's hard for you to reprimand something when your hands have been stained with the same kind of crime. David couldn't respond to Absalom killing Amnon. He couldn't respond to Amnon raping Tamar because he was caught in the same kind of... I, I like what Matthew the 7th chapter says. Matthew the 7th chapter says, well, uh, why would you even go in and try to pull the speck out of my eye when you got a plank in yours? Uh, sometimes we find ourselves around so holy of a folk. That when we find ourselves caught in sin, they want to come and tell us how to live our life. You want to tell me how to clean my life up when your life look like, look like it ought to be an ally to waste. You want to tell me how to live when you don't even know how to clean your own self up. Sweep around your own front door. Yeah, this story spans around six chapters. About eight years long, Absalom, after two years, he kills Amnon. David doesn't respond because his hands are tied up. And every time your hands are full of guilty stain, it has a way of taking away your influence. Any time your hands are tied up and you can't respond because I've been caught in the same mess, it has a way of stripping you of the power of your influence. One son commits a sexual affair, another son commits a murder. Sin has a way of taking away the power to, to disperse the right judgment. That's why David couldn't respond because it was not that David did not love his children, but the guilt of sin had weighed down on him so much that he couldn't respond. That's the problem with us. We've been walking around carrying burdens that should have been gone three years ago. I, I can't respond the way I should to salvation because my hands are still tied up because of what I did with the last person. I can't respond and sing in this choir the way I should because my mind is still caught up on the fact that I used to be a prostitute. My mind is caught up on the fact that I used to snort crack and I used to shoot myself up. But the Bible also tells me in Romans 8 that now, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in the Christ, in Christ Jesus. Uh, the Bible also tells us that Jesus went to the cross for our sins. And it says that he that had no sin became sin. So that may become the righteousness of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah David said David, David, David was stained. He was stained with, with, with guilty sin. And I want to help you right now because the one reason, one way that you get yourself away from guilty stain 
is that you drop on down in Matthew 7 to about the seven, uh, 6 or 7 verse. And, and that, passage, that passage says, don't cast what's holy unto dogs. And don't cast your pearls unto swine. For they will trample it under feet. And then turn around and tear you to pieces. Now in that passage of scripture, Jesus was actually talking about teaching folk who didn't want to hear. Because he understood that there were some people who wouldn't receive your word. So if, there was, if Jesus understood that there were some people who wouldn't receive the word, Pastor, then there are, we ought to be able to understand that there are some people who just can't receive me. Oh Lord, some of y'all missed that. Because you've been giving yourself to people who don't deserve you. You, you, you've been sitting at the table with folk who don't even recognize what God put in you. I don't have time to cast my holy stuff unto dogs. Because anytime you cast something to a dog, he can't tell the difference. That's the reason why your holy self look like that street woman to him. Because he can't tell what a holy woman look like. Whenever you cast something that ought to be given to God to pigs, they eat everything. They devour everything. Cast some pearls in there. They'll devour that. Cast some gold in there. They'll devour that. They don't have the eyesight or the spiritual discernment to say, this is a woman that I need to be with. Yeah, yeah every, everything, everything looks the same to them. Everything looks the same to them. And that's the reason why we ought to keep our hands out of guilty stains because anytime the Bible says, cast not your holy stuff to dogs, that means you have a choice. You have a choice to receive was right for your life. I, I'm, I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time with this. I, I, I like I like what Matthew seven says because he says and uh, uh, he makes a different differentiation between speck and log. I'm getting back to I'm getting back to David a little bit. Give, give me a second. He then make, makes a different rate, differentiation between speck and log. Speck. He says sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the speck in our eye, people want to come and pull it out. And sometimes they show up to pull that speck out after, I've, after I have already sinned, cried, and repented. But then you want to come in and tell me how I should have been living before the mess. Well, baby, what about your life right now? You a mess, you all jacked up. You don't know exactly what's going on in my life, but yet and still you want to cast your problems on me. Uh, David had to give stain on his life. And it took away his influence. Because people are more inclined to watch what you do rather than hear. And I, and I understand that's why we can't separate the two in this Christian walk. Because if we're going to teach obedience, then we got to live. We, 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 can't, we can't separate the two in this walk because even though God has obligated me to preach the gospel he's also obligated me to have the same kind of life that's why the Bible says that look look anybody that comes to Christ is a all things have passed behold all things have become and if you're gonna teach this life live uh, uh, he said he said people would try to hold things over you Tie your hands in guilt and, re and render you powerless to uh, the testimony of the love of God. But anybody who understands who God is knows that any time I mess up, God is still going to be able to show up. That any time I fall down, the Bible says he'll lift me up. Dust me up. I like what David said in Psalms around the third chapter. He said he's the lifter up of mine head. He understands exactly what I'm dealing with. The Bible says he's able to sympathize with my problems. That whenever I'm going through life out here, whatever I'm dealing with, he's able to understand that sin is caught in my flesh. But if those who walk according to the spirit understand that there is no condemnation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some things have been, uh, some stuff is trapped in this flesh that will cause a sin guilt stain. But I heard John say in Revelation 7 that after the 144,000 were sealed, John looked out and saw a number that he could not count. And the Bible says that the, one of the elders asked him, well, who is this? And John said, well, don't you know who they are? He said, these are those who have come through much tribulation. 
that everything that I've been wrestling with, I'm still going to come out regardless of my guilt stand. Yes. Everything that I had to crawl myself through, I'm still coming out regardless of what you think about me. Everything that, I, that I've been fighting with, I'm still going to overcome regardless of what yes. you think about me. Yes. He says, I looked out and saw a number. Yes. And the elder said that these are they who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Whatever is stained on my back, the blood can wash. And somebody ought to understand that whatever you went through, Jesus died for that. That if you lost something, Jesus died for that. If you stepped on somebody, Jesus died for that. If you fornicated, Jesus died for that. If you're prostituting, Jesus died. Okay, okay, and, and, and I listen, listen, listen. The Bible says that Absalom kills Amnon and flees to Geshur. Yes, sir. And he stays there for three years. Uh, sin has a way of putting separation between us and the Father. Uh, Absalom carried out his task of revenge, but uh, it pushed him further away out of fellowship with his Father. And just like Absalom, we have pushed ourselves further from the Father. Uh, we've done it through our behavior. Uh, we've done it through what we've been doing in the midnight hour. Uh, we've done it through what we've been doing with that other person's. Uh, it doesn't mean, it, listen, and listen, listen. Anytime we've been disfellowship doesn't mean that we're not saved. Uh, it, it just means that you're going to experience some of the things that the unbeliever has to experience. Because anytime you're out of fellowship with God, you, you're still the child of a king. But you don't have the same benefits at the moment. So whenever I push you farther from me, I got to push you away to let you understand that it was better underneath my wing. So it, whatever, whenever you understand it's better underneath my wing, you'll do whatever it takes to stay. Absalom was disfellowshipped. And he pushed himself further away. And the thing about that, and the thing about that is that, that, we, that when we experience what the unbeliever is experiencing, the joy that we used to have, we just don't find it anymore. The peace that I used to have, I, I don't seem to have my, gra my hand grabbing it anymore. The, 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 the unexpected blessings I was getting when, when, when I was associated with my father, I don't find them popping up around my area anymore. But whenever I find myself running back to him, yeah, that, 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 that's how you get yourself back in, into fellowship with him. You just need to say, uh, uh, son of David, have mercy. And the, and the problem with the church is we don't know how to repent no more. Uh, we think that we can just do whatever we want to do and God just going to turn a blind eye. But now, baby, when you come into this house of God, this is a holy place. And when you come up in here, some things ought to fall off of you that you brought up in here. I don't understand how we can walk with him and then say we saved, but yet and still we doing things 10 years later. Some things ought to fall off. The Bible says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Uh, that cross, uh, this ain't just lip service because that cross going to take some strength and some effort and anytime you standing up with the cross on your back there's going to be some temptations anytime you got the cross on your back there's going to be somebody talking about you there's going to be somebody pulling you down but whenever I got the cross on my back I'm able to stand up and say Lord I need you every hour God I need you to step in right now my flesh is weak my mind is gone my heart is broken but if I got you God I'm able to stand The Bible says he was separated. He was separated. Uh, and, and, and when you slip, slip on over to the 14th chapter, Joab comes up with a, with, a, with a plan to get Absalom back. Joab sends a woman from Tekoa in. And, and, and she goes through this whole entire act of trying to get David's attention. And without going into detail about that, uh, uh, David finally succumbs to what's going on and he, and he tells Joab, go down there to Geshur and bring Absalom on back. But when he comes back, 
tell him to go to his own house. Because he can't come to mine. And the problem with some of us is that we ain't learned how to forgive yet. Uh, I forgive you, but I ain't forgot. Well, then, baby, you ain't forgave. Because forgiveness is a submission to love in you. And any time you forgive anybody, you ought to be able to restore them back to their rightful place. But if I find myself in an issue with you and you forgave me and I ain't back with my rightful place, well, then you ain't forgave me. The Bible says he goes down to and gets Absalom out of Geshur, brings him back to his house. He stays at his own house, and for two years, he doesn't see his father. I'm trying to rush to the close. And, and, and finally, Absalom, get, Absalom gets upset, and he calls on Joab the first time, and Joab doesn't show up. He calls him a second time, and Joab doesn't show up. And Absalom says, come here, servants. Look out there. Joab's fields are next to mine. Go on over there and set fire to his barley. The servants go over there. They put his field on fire. Joel finally shows up. And that's why you got to watch emotional folk. Because any time they want to get an audience from you, they'll do whatever they can to get your ear. Any time they want to get in your presence, they'll slap you in your face. They'll break out windows. They'll put tires on flat because all they want is an audience. with you and the problem with some of us right now is that the reason that we got so much hell going on in our life is because we've stopped giving the devil an ear the reason that the devil is going rapid in your house right now is because you stopped giving him audience so right now he's trying to do what he can to get your attention so right now he's trying to cause divorces he's trying to cause children to act up he's trying to separate families because he's, you stop giving him an audience to your ear. Whatever you do in my body, I'm focused on the Lord. Whatever you do in my home, I'm focused on the Lord. Whatever you do in my job, I'm focused on the Lord. Well, because I stopped giving an audience, he's running rapid. Nah, oh, baby, it ain't, it ain't because you so powerful. It's just because he's trying to break down your faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, hey, Absalom, Absalom comes in, and Absalom is finally uh, returned, and he finally gets an audience with Joab. And he says, listen, you go over there and tell David that I could have stayed in Geshur. If he was going to bring me back to the house to not see me, I could have stayed where I was. And some of us right now don't have the same kind of uh, 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 resources that David has. <laughs> we can't be mad at somebody and put him in another house. Some of us right now, the same person we mad at, Tony, we stay with every night. It's the same person we, that we mad at, we fixing dinner for them at night. The same person that we upset with, we got to wash their clothes. The same person we upset with, we're washing, running bath water for. We don't have the uh, opportunity to put them in another house. So we don't have the, 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 the opportunity to halfway forgive. The Bible says Absalom comes. And Joab gives him, I'm almost there, Joab gives him an audience. And Joab says, I'm going to go talk to David for you. He gets in front of David. And when he gets in front of David, David takes him back in. And he hugs him and he gives him a kiss. And I thank God that David finally came to his senses. Because sometimes if we don't know how to forgive our neighbor, <laughs> then God would then keep things that we should have away from us. See, forgiveness is blocking a whole lot of our avenues right now. Because we don't know how to say, baby, I forgive you. Come on back into full relationship with me. But because we want to be upset and cause them to stand out there a little while. I forgive you, but you sit over there. I forgive you, but I ain't coming home tonight. I forgive you, but I'm not sleeping in the bed with you tonight. Because we don't know how to forgive, God is running rampant through our relationships. But the moment that we find out that we submit ourselves to him, God is able to restore. How many people have ever been restored from something? How many people have ever been restored to the point to where, to where you didn't even recognize the first time you left? Because God fixed it up so good for you the second time. 
that when you came back, you didn't even recognize the place you came from. And I come to tell you right now, God is about to restore some things. Some of you have been ran out your house, but God said, I'm giving it back to you. Some of you have been ran out your relationship, but God said, I'm building it up better. Some of you have been ran out of your job, but God said, you didn't, they didn't deserve you anyhow. God said, I'm getting ready to restore some years that the canker worm have taken from you. And if anybody wants to see their life restored, stand on your feet and give God some praise. Listen, I know, I know we want, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to stay in my time, and I, I'm, out, I'm already there, Tony. So the Bible says that David takes Absalom back, and he gives him a kiss. And Absalom comes back into the house. And there's so much more to that story that I can't finish it. But any time we understand that God is able to look past our faults, the Bible said unto him who is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before his presence and glory. To him who is wise. God is able to look past who we are. And see who we need to be. I'm going to sit down now. But I want to encourage you to go home. And if there's anything that you're holding against anybody. Strip it down right now. God is too good. He's too loving. For you to stand up here and hold somebody hostage with your silliness. But if there's any kind of God in you, then let it go. Thank you. Amen. Amen.